Uh, I grew up in uh, Tucson, Arizona, and Tucson, Arizona is basically it's it's wildcat country is what they call it, and everyone there is just an avid uh, University of Arizona wildcat fan. And and growing up there, I right out I mean right from the beginning, I was an Arizona State fan. I was a Sun Devil at heart. That's just what I wanted to do. I I love talking trash to all the people and <laughs> and. Just growing up, I told my dad, you know, I want to, I'm going to play baseball for Arizona State one day. And, and just knowing the tradition and knowing all the history that's come out of there, like Reggie Jackson and Barry Bonds and Paul Lajuka, it's just you have all these names that came out of there. And, and just seeing the maroon and gold just was, was crazy. So that when I, when I got an opportunity to play there, um, it was just, it was surreal. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was better than I could have imagined to just have the Sun Devils across my chest and just, you know, go out there and compete as a Sun Devil and even go down to Tucson and, and competing against the Wildcats. Right. It's it's one of the it's one of the best feelings that I've ever had and and, and I don't think anything would ever top that because it's just it's been a dream and a wish that I've had since a, since childhood and, and to have to be able to get the opportunity to do that was just amazing. Wow. Did you <laughs> when you were in high school, would you walk around with an ASU uh, t shirt on? Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I'd get a lot of I'd get a lot of crap for it. Thanks. Thankfully, I was. Uh, I had a lot of good friends and everything, and 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 everyone since elementary knew that I was an Arizona State fan. So it was elementary, middle school, high school. I was wearing it, wearing the colors. Whenever they won, whenever they beat the U of A, you could hear me in the halls. Yeah. It was. I mean, I was one of very few, maybe like three, three kids, and the three kids in my high school, we knew each other. Yeah. We knew we were ASU fans. You find you find in Tucson, you find the Arizona State fans, and and you get to know them because there's so few. But yeah, yep. Yeah, you could you. I was the one wearing the Arizona State shirts or the backpack and talking the trash. <laughs> and did you go to you know all the games for for you know ASU if you could? Uh yeah, if if I could make the ASU U of A baseball games, you could catch me there. I was I've been to the ones where um uh Dustin Pedroia when he used to play there, I caught him. Um a lot a lot of the a lot of the games I, I you you could find me there watching him. Right. Wow. And what was your high school experience like? Um, high school high school was fun. I it was uh I was in South Tucson and South Tucson's more the you know, it's not the traditional um it is it, it was minorities, a lot of minorities, a lot of uh Mexicans. And uh that that's just where I've grown up. It's it's where I what I've known and going to high school, I mean I played baseball and everything. I didn't I I wasn't allowed to play any other any other sports because my dad wouldn't let me. But um so it was, it was baseball every year, every day. Wow. Just training for baseball, baseball, baseball. And then um you know, growing up growing up with my baseball friends, we all went to the same high school, so we all we all we all played at the same level and it was just, you know, high school was fun because it was, I knew everyone and, and yeah. I knew almost the whole high school because we all basically grew up together and it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Right. And when you played um, summer league, did you get to travel? Uh, summer league, I would, what I would do is I wouldn't like my, my dad to go out and spend money for stuff for summer league. So, I would basically find the cheapest league and me and my friends, we would get in there. And usually it was a, a collegiate league or a, some kind of league. And, and it was just uh, somewhere in Tucson. And then we'd play other teams in Tucson. Sometimes we'd go up and travel to Phoenix and play. But um, for the most part, it was just Tucson based. And it was, I took the summer leagues as, you know, you got to find something that no one else has, like develop a change of, develop a slider. You got to find something to develop on. So usually my summer league never went very well because I was always working on something. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. And by the time you'd finished uh, the summer league, that thing that you were working on had it kind of worked out. Yeah. I mean, it usually it was basically three months on working on a pitch, and and um, I was basically known. Growing up, I was I could throw hard, but I never knew where it was going. And right. so a lot of a lot of the summer leagues and a lot of the, over the years was just getting to pinpoint my fastball. And once I got to do that and understanding what kind of fastball I had, because 
I mean, growing up, I thought, okay, a fastball is supposed to be straight. It's not supposed to be moving so much. Why does mine move? I got to get it to stop moving. Okay. Once I once I realized that what I was throwing was a sinker fastball, the sink a uh, sinker. Yeah. Um, it's actually good to have a fastball that moves, a fastball with life that moves. And once I accepted that, you know what, your balls, no matter no matter what, your ball is going to move. It's going to tail. You got to learn how to control that tail and put the tail where you want instead of putting the fastball where you want. Right. Okay. So w- once I got control of where to put my fastball, then it was okay. Now you need something else because people can hit fastballs. Then it was the curveball, and then once the curveball went came, then it was the slider, and then it was the change. So. Every summer, it was something different, something I had to work on, like yeah. either whether whether it be cutting down my walks, um, increasing my strikeouts, increasing my velocity. There was always something that I had to get better on. And usually, every summer, I came out, you know, a, dra- a, a, a good a good amount better than than what I had okay. gone into the summer. Yeah. Right. Were there a couple of batters that were on the <laughs> the, the wrong end of <laughs> of the fastball when you first played? Working on there, uh, growing up, there was a 12-year-old kid. Um, I was 12. He was 12. I was just starting to pitch. Yeah. I threw really, really hard. No idea where it was going. And when, when you're batting, you're taught if the ball's coming at you, you, you turn inward. You show the ball your back, and you let it hit your back because you yeah. don't want to switch that. The back's the strongest part. Yeah. This kid, he turned outward and oh. went chest to, chest to pitch. Yeah, and it hit him square in the chest. and um, he, he let out a yell that basically just said, there goes all my breath. Uh, and he dropped to the floor. And the funny thing was I was standing there. I mean, I was in shock. I was like, like, I thought I killed this kid. And his dad jumped up from the stands. You could hear him screaming. Oh my God. He ran onto the field. He picked up his son and he like ran his son off the field, was trying to get him help and everything when, you know, his son was just out of breath. So, and that was a sight when I was 12. And when I was a, a junior in high school, um, it was the first game of the season. I had thrown a curveball to the number three hitter who was also pitching that day. And he's, he's a real good hitter, real good pitcher. He saw my curveball the entire way. He tracked it in, he leaned in and watched it to the catcher. So I said, okay, um, I'm I'm gonna put a fastball in on him. Yeah. He's not gonna you know he's not gonna lean over the plate and do that to me. Like I I had a lot of arrogance and I was like I'm gonna brush this guy off. I'm gonna scare him. Yeah. So I, I just remember putting my head down, throwing it as hard as I could. I had hit my spot. It was a good pushback pitch. He thought it was a curveball. He leaned in on it and it hit him square in the face. His Ooh. helmet blew up. His helmet shattered. He hit the ground. Uh, blood was coming down his face. Wow. Um, yeah, I went. I went over to go see if he was all right, and I leaned over him. I was standing over him. I asked, "Are you okay?" Um, they said, "Yeah, he's fine. You know, just go ahead and give him some air and stuff." So I walked off. The next day, in the paper, for uh, the Douglas paper, it they had me standing over him. Oh dear. It, it looks. It looks like I'm threatening him, or, or like I. I did that on purpose. Um, yeah. And they, they put some caption in there that says, um, you know, Pueblo High School knows how to play dirty or something like that. But, I mean, it was completely unintentional. Yeah. But I'll never forget that. That I hit that kid pretty hard. 